Today we will be studying about the Intel 80x86 family of processors. Um, you can see the first personal computer was developed by IBM using the Intel 8088, Intel 8088 as the uh, CPU. Uh, but ever since then, the uh, applications and the usage of personal computers are actually increasing by day by day. So this this demands a great improvement and advancement in PCs, which in turn demands an improvement in microprocessors. So actually, uh, the microprocessors uh, needs to be improved every time. Actually, Intel understood that, okay, and I realized that there is a demand for improvement in microprocessor. So, what it does is it actually keeps on increasing the demand, uh, increasing the uh, features of microprocessors every year. And the Intel is, uh, every year Intel is releasing a new microprocessor with the improved features. Okay, so why is there why is there a requirement for uh, new microprocessor for updating the microprocessor? There are certain reasons for that. The reasons are the first one is there is an increasing or there is an increased word length, word length, and memory space. Memory space. Why? Because you can see that every uh, time as the personal computers or the computers improve, we actually expect the computer to process more data and more data in short period of time. So as a result, the world length of the world length is actually increasing and the memory space is also increasing. So as the word size or memory space increases, the, uh, the, the performance of the microprocessor or the microprocessor should be able to process that much data in that defined time. So, there is a demand for improvement because of the increasing word length and memory space. The other one is increased internal performance. Increased internal performance means that the internal performance uh, is actually needs to be improved every time. So, uh, the internal performance, we the, uh, the processor should be able to, uh, to uh, process a large amount of data or more data with greater accuracy. So the performance needs to be increased uh, every time. So this actually needs to be applicable to the microprocessor. So the microprocessor's performance should be increased periodically. The other one is the increased external communication. Increased external communication external communication so you can see that the communication you can see that the number of peripherals are actually increasing uh, the peripherals attached or the peripherals needs to be attached to the computer is actually increased so the communication between the peripherals or the peripherals and the processor is also increasing so uh, there should be an uh, improvement or there should be an increased communication should be possible between the uh, processors and the other one is <coughs> improved instruction set. You can see that the instruction sets or the number of instructions are actually increasing in number. Why? Because the processor needs to uh, needs to do more things. So as a result, the instruction set is actually improving. We are adding new instruction codes to this. So the instruction set is actually increasing. So when the instruction set actually increasing, the processor needs to do all those instructions. So as a result, the processor should be improved or updated timely. The other one is improved troubleshooting. So the errors of errors that occur in a pro, uh, in a in a computer needs to be solved more uh, accurately or or improved in an improved way so the troubleshooting and error detection or uh, troubleshooting aids are actually improving so needs to be improved so for all these reasons um, the uh, microprocessors needs to be upgraded timely so actually intel understood or uh, actually intel realized the the demand for improvement of microprocessors and as a result, it is actually improving the microprocessors. Yes, but initially, uh, the uh, Intel, Intel actually used 8086 microprocessors that we have 
learned earlier 8086 uh, processors as the base model it used it as a base model and improved it lightly actually the basic structure was of 8086 uh, and it and intel improved it and released models like 80186 80286 80386 and 486 so all this belong to the family of 80x86 family of microprocessors this is the 80x86 family of microprocessor but after a period of time intel actually switched or intel actually dropped the idea of taking 8086 as a base model and switched it to a super scalar model scalar model that is it actually improved uh, from top to bottom so and it released the pentium processors the, uh, something that you actually see in your computers right now the pentium processors it actually includes the pentium pentium pro pentium 1 2 3 and 3 and 4 processors pentium 1 2 pentium 3 and pentium 4 processors actually there is no pentium 1 okay so there's pentium pentium pro pentium 2 pentium 3 pentium 4 processors okay uh, we are not going in detail to each of these processors but uh, we will we will go in a later section but first and foremost we have to study about the first one is that is intel 8086 processors the 8086 processors is very important for us to learn so we will learn about the intel 80186 processors so intel 80186 processors so actually intel 80186 processors was actually developed in the year 1982 so intel 80186 is released in the year 182 uh, 1982 uh, it is actually a 16 bit microprocessor 16 bit microprocessor similar to 8086 and it actually consists of 15 to 20 of the most common microprocessor based system components it uh, 15 to 20 of the most common microprocessor uh, based system components system components uh, in a single chip this is something very important it is a single chip it is a single chip microprocessor so this it is a single chip microprocessor it because it actually integrated the two parts of 8086 that is the uh, the first one is the bus interface unit and execution unit so the bus interface unit and execution unit is now uh, uh, along with some other components is now integrated to a single chip so this was the most peculiar aspect of, uh, aspect of 80186 processor so it actually included um, the uh, bus interface unit and execution unit obviously and it also included a clock generator to generate internal clock something we haven't there you know that it's in 8086 there was no internal clock uh, generator then a programmable interrupt controller programmable interrupt controller uh, the programmable timers programmable timers timers programmable dma controllers and then programmable chip selection unit and there is also a local bus controller control then this 80186 is actually object code compatible object code compatible with uh, 8086 compatible 8086 and actually it gives the twice the performance of 8086 twice the performance of 8086 it is actually object code compatible because all the object code all the instruction codes that are written in uh, 8086 can be used for 80186 this is something called as upward compatibility upward compatibility and uh, the 80186 has got a 20 bit address line so it can directly access to raised to 20 that is equal to 1 megabyte of memory space 
uh, and 80186 memory organization and input output addressing is actually identical to or similar to 8086. Uh, the 80186 is available with a maximum internal clock frequency of uh, 6, 6, 8, 10 and 12 megahertz. This is actually an improvement from 8086 because 8086 had only a maximum clock frequency of 5 megahertz. So this is um, 5 megahertz. So this is actually an improvement from uh, 8086 to 80186. Now we will study about the pins the pins and the signals okay. we'll study about the pins actually 80186 is a 68 pin ic this is even an improvement from 8086 because the 8086 had only 40 pins now uh, six, uh, in the 80186 is actually a 68 pin ic this come in three different packages three packages and the packages are actually the first one is plastic leaded chip carrier carrier that is plcc the other one is ceramic ceramic leadless chip carrier or uh, lcc and the other one is uh, the ceramic pin grid array ceramic pin grid array or pga and so it comes in three packages the plastic leaded chip carrier ceramic leadless chip carrier and ceramic pin grid array so these are the three types of packages that is available for 80186 and as you can see that in 80186 we have already said that 80186 has a 20 bit address line and similar to 8086 what we do is the first 16 address lines that is address lines that is a0 to a15 is actually multiplexed with the data lines d0 to okay uh, it's actually and this uh, is used as ad0 to ad15 multiplexed with the data lines the address the first 16 address lines is actually multiplexed with the, the uh, remaining uh, the with the, the data lines okay and then the remaining four address lines that is ad16 to ad20 is actually multiplied with the multiplexed with the status so sorry this is a0 okay, okay. This is A16 to A20 is actually multiplied with the status lines. Status lines. And similarly, uh, 28086, it has actually got two memory banks of half the size, that is 524 uh, and, uh, oh, sorry, 512 KB, right, of two banks that is old memory bank and even memory bank we are actually not going in detail to the to each of the pin and there is no need for that to study the uh, usage of each pin now so we are quickly moving to the architecture of 80186 architecture of 80186 so the architecture of 80186 we can uh, learn about that so let me draw a diagram So similar to 8086, the 80186 has actually got two units that is the bus interface unit or BIU and the execution unit. Let me draw this here. The execution unit. 
So, uh, the bus interface unit and execution unit is actually identical to that of uh, 8086 that is the uh, bus interface unit has got four 16 bit segment registers. So, it has the segment registers and it has a 6 byte instruction queue. So, instruction queue uh, and and it has got uh, the execution uh, the execution unit has got a 16 bit LU and it has the general purpose registers general purpose registers and also has the uh, bus control uh, unit or the bus bus control unit so it is all the say, same as and the flags everything is same as that of the 80816 8086 8 is actually uh, identical to 8086 uh, in that matter but unlike the uh, 8086 it has got some other things like us an internal clock generator an internal clock generator android here has an internal clock generator so actually internal clock generator has a crystal oscillator okay. it has got a, a it has got a crystal oscillator oscillator uh, and a crystal oscillator a uh, divide by two counter has got a counter and uh, asynchronous and synchronous uh, ready inputs and a reset circuitry so you can see that it is like okay it has got it actually has got uh, like, uh, a, a reset and reset So it has got two input uh, ready input ready input and reset ready input and a reset circuitry then uh, of an external quad signal frequency that is uh, of double of the processor clock should be connected through the lines say x1 x1 and x2 to the uh, the clock generator uh, so the clock signal is also given up through a clock out clock out is through a clock out pin you this is for the peripheral devices and uh, the clock generator also provides an internal timing to the uh, to the microprocessor this is for synchronizing the uh, synchronizing the internal signals of the uh, microprocessor and then we have a timer unit uh, a timer unit we can call it the programmable timer so here we have a programmable timer we have a programmable timers we have actually three programmable timers name it as 0 1 and 2 the timer 0 and timer 1 timer 0 and timer 1 can be used to count external events uh, internal events and generate uh, waveforms the 0 and 1 2 it can 0 and 1 can be used as used to uh, count external events internal events and generate waveforms the, uh, the the timer 0 and timer 1 can either be uh, either be controlled by an external clock or by an internal clock internal timing operations and the third one or the timer 2 is a, is used only for internal timing it is only used for internal timing and uh, and it is actually used as a watchdog timer or as a dma request source so a watchdog timer is nothing but a clock source for other timers okay uh, which is actually a, a watchdog timer is a timer that can uh, internally interrupt the processor after a program time interval. The timer 2 is actually a watchdog timer because it can interrupt the uh, processor after a programmed time interval. Okay. 
that is the uh, the programmable timers that it has three timers 0 1 and 2 1 and 2 are actually controlled either by an external uh, timer source or by an internal timer 2 is uh, actually a watchdog timer because it can interrupt and also it is only used for internal timings sorry uh, okay in for only for internal timing operations then it has a dma controller unit okay dma programmable dma controller a programmable dma controller it consists of two dma channels uh, let's say zero and one okay the dma transfer can be performed between memory and input output uh, between between memory between memory between io or between memory and io okay so the dma can be done in that way uh, the dma the memory can be transferred either in bytes or words okay it actually has a 20 bit source pointer a destination pointer a 16 bit count registers count register 16 bit count register and a 16 bit control register so it has a source pointer it has a destination pointer it has a count register and a control register the source pointer actually stores the address of the source okay uh, source and a destination pointer is actually stores the destination address okay. Um, then the DMA channels, it has two DMA channels for 0 and 1 and the DMA channels can be programmed uh, in such a way that one channel has got higher priority than the other. That is why we call it as a programmable DMA controller. Then we have an interrupt control unit. We have an interrupt control unit. Interrupt control unit. Uh, it actually uh, controls or uh, carries out all internal and external interrupts. Okay. So, there are five external, external, five external interrupts that are into 0, into 1, into, into 0, 1, 2, 3 and NMI. That is non-maskable interrupts. So let's draw that here. Programmable interrupt controller. So we have one, two, three into one into two into three, and non-maskable interrupt is it's actually given to the execution unit because it is non-maskable interrupt. So that is it. There are four. Oh, there are five external interrupts at zero, one. 2, 3 and NMI. The external hardware interrupts can be expanded by connecting it to, to, to an uh, Intel 8259. Intel 8259. It can be connected to Intel 8259 for expanding the external hardware interrupts. So, okay. Uh, they, these are connected to actually to the Int0 and Int1 inputs. The internal interrupts of 80186 actually includes predefined interrupts, fine interrupts, software interrupts, and interrupts from internal timers. So these are the internal interrupts. The internal interrupts are of predefined software or from internal timers. Okay. Uh, there are five there, there are five internal interrupts are from 8086 five predefined interrupts are from 8086 that are divided by zero error uh, single step nmi breakpoint interrupt uh, and um, interrupt on overflow overflow interrupts these five are from 8086 okay but apart from that there are three extra predefined interrupts the first one is array bounds array bounds uh, then unused opcode then there is this ESC opcode 
So array bounds is occurs if the boundary of an index register is outside the value set up for memory. So we can we know that in C we have array index out of bounds exception something like that. Similarly, if uh, the uh, boundary of an index register, so if the index register is outside the value set up by the memory, then we generate an array bounds interrupt. Then the unused opcode interrupt. That is, if uh, it if the uh, in, uh, if there is a, an error with the, the pro whenever a processor executes any undefined opcode, for example, uh, if you write as int uh, instead of int, if you write ini, it will uh, generate this interrupt unused opcode interrupt. So ESC opcode interrupt uh, actually occurs when uh, ESC opcodes are executed. Okay, so the the eight zero one eight six similar to eight zero eight six has been allowed a type number for each of these in, uh, exceptions. Okay, then we have a chip selection unit. Okay. Again, draw that here, a chip selection unit. This is a chip selection unit. Uh, this actually generates the chip select signals for memories and the peripherals. Okay, there are six memory chip select outputs. They are UCS, LCS, and MCS. Zero to four, zero to three. Okay, that is MCS zero, MCS one, MCS two, and MCS three. So UCS is also called as upper chip select ucs so ucs is equal to upper chip select so it actually select the upper memory space the okay, upper memory space from 1 kb so if this is the memory ucs is used to select the upper space that is of upper 1 kb to 256 kb it can select uh, upper 1 KB to 256 KB and LCS or lower chip select is used to select one the lower 1 KB to 256 KB. So this is used. The MCS is used to select the uh, remaining portion of memory. Okay. The chip select unit uh, also provides 7 peripheral chip select signals. Okay. These are used to select external uh, um, memory blocks the chip select unit it actually provides seven peripheral chip selection so each peripheral chip select signal address 128 kb memory block okay, okay. so this is uh, actually the uh, the architecture of 80186 and uh, we have already said that uh, the instruction code uh, the 80186 actually provides uh, extra 10 instructions, 10 additional instructions that are not present in 8086. Uh, so these are like enter. This is to enter a procedure. Leave. This is a, to leave from a procedure. Then bound. The, this is to check whether the array index is inside the bound. So, if it is not, it will generate uh, an interrupt that is array bound interrupt. Uh, the other one is INS. This is to input a string. Out S. This is to output a string. Then push A. This is to push all the registers to a stack. Then pop A. This is to pop all registers from a stack. Then you have push im. This is to push all immediate data to stack. Then i mul. This is to multiply immediate data, source data, uh, and store data in a register. That it can be it can be followed by uh, sorry reg, or it can be so you or can be immediate. So, this is to multiply immediate data and source data and store the result in a register. Okay. 
so yeah sorry this is black yeah so it contains the register pitch so immediate so what will it will do it is it will multiply the source data with the immediate data and then it will store the result in the register so it is imer then you have shift shift uh, so shift it is destination comma immediate data so it will uh, what it does is that it shifts the destination register memory contents to a specified immediate number of times so you, you can say if, uh, so it will shift the contents of the said register in an immediate number of times if you say four it will shift four times so that is the uh, the uh, there are 10 instructions we have discussed uh, 10 of them so these are enter leave bound ins outs push a pop a push immediate imun shift so these are the uh, extra 10 instructions that are present in 8086 that are not present in 8086. So, okay. So these are the extra 10 instructions. So we'll, uh, once again, we'll say that, uh, so the 80186 has got some other things that are not present in 8086, like it has similar to 8086, you have bus interface unit and execution unit. But apart from that, uh, there is an internal clock generator there is an internal clock generator then uh, we have uh, a program timers then interrupt control interrupt control unit chip selection unit and then uh, a programmable dma control so this is the dma control controller okay so these are the uh, other things that are not present in uh, 8086 we have discussed each of them we have studied about the interrupt that it is performing that it has five external interrupts 0 1 2 3 and nmi or non-maskable interrupt then uh, these uh, intel 0 0 into 0 and 1 can be combined to intel 8259 for uh, extra interrupts then external interrupts they are there are predefined interrupts software interrupts and in um, the internal timer interrupts so predefined interrupts five of them are from 8086 they are divided by error by zero error single step uh, nmi breakpoint and interrupt overflow apart from that there are three extra there are array bounds unused opcode ese opcode then we studied about uh, the <coughs> extra 10 instructions that are present in 820186 that are not present in 8086. Uh, so we will study about 80286 in the next session.